Hello and welcome back to Animation Was a Mistake, the series where I document my deep dive into the harrowing world of poorly animated films, probably made in two days with a budget of 15 cents, a gum wrapper, and a Taco Bell gift card. Now I love animation, and I'm sure you do as well. It's an incredibly diverse medium that can lead to some really powerful works of art, but it can also lead to whatever this is. I'm gonna bite you! I'm gonna drag you all around! I'm gonna stomp you! Yeah. You may remember from last time a channel called Encourage TV. They upload all kinds of movies for free right here on YouTube. And when I say that this channel is a goldmine for entertainment, I mean it is a f***ing goldmine. The two pieces of media that we'll be looking at today are insane. Full of bonkers moments and hilariously bad production quirks. And they're the first two that I clicked on. I did not put these movies through any kind of vetting process, no. They're all like this, and I'm absolutely here for it. Now before we begin, just a little note about how this video is going to be formatted. At first I tried scripting everything, which I didn't quite like. So then I tried scripting nothing, and I also didn't quite like that. <laughs> so now I'm going to try a combination of both. I'm going to show you my initial reactions and then throw in scripted bits to tie everything together. Good? Okay? Okay, we're good. Without further ado, let's head over to my initial reaction. Hi, it's me, Initial Reaction Jonah. So I thought it'd be too confusing if I was jumping back and forth between two angles of me in the same spot. So I'm somewhere else now, and I'll never tell you where. No, I'm literally sitting in the exact same place. I just move the camera 180 degrees. Movie magic. So the theme of today's episode is ripoffs. Movies that absolutely no one would pay attention to if they didn't copy something about another successful animated film. I've got two of those lined up for us today, and the first one, see if you can guess what this is copying. Finding Jesus. I'm just it, really curious about, like, why... So obviously it's ripping off Monsters, Inc. No, it's ripping off Finding Nemo, and it's also Christian, so I guess we'll find out how they like turn the Finding Nemo premise into Something Christian they don't besides the fact that the main characters are fish This movie has nothing to do with Finding Nemo and the fish the fish doesn't look that that creepy. Maybe the animation will be okay That's a pretty good looking water, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so it's looking like the animation is gonna be like not that bad, which I'm thankful for. Yeah, so the animation in this one is like fine to look at. The fish are cute. Unfortunately though, the lip syncing is non-existent and their facial expressions never change, even when there's dialogue that should suggest otherwise. So like, it's still bad. But hey, maybe they spent all of their budget on really good voice actors. It's a beautiful underwater day in the ocean. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, um, what accent are you trying to do, ma'am? She's clearly, she's clearly trying to do British. Um, but it's not working. It's a beautiful underwater day in the ocean. In the ocean. It's a beautiful underwater day in the ocean. You wouldn't say that. Like, it'd be weird if I said, it's a beautiful above-ground day on land, fellow land animals. Joy, I can't think of anyone better to search for algae than with you. Same here, Muggles. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love this. I love the voice acting. And here is Professor Shock. He leads his school of fish, and he's always happy to see his school's youngest fish. I don't like the way they f I don't like that phrasing. And he's always happy to see the school's youngest fish. Maybe, like, pick a different adjective. I love days like today. So do we, Professor Shark. That's right. Jesus sure has blessed us with lives in such a beautiful underwater universe. Oh right, I almost forgot this is a Christian movie. 
They're Christian fish, okay. So Muggles and Joy here are Professor Shark's best students. And today he's got a job for them, which is to go and cheer up their friend, Scary Henry. Scary Henry? Scary Henry? Yes, Scary Henry! And I'm sure you have some image of what Scary Henry looks like. Um, it's this guy. He's scared. But Mr. Shark wants them to go and check in on Henry because he's been feeling super down lately and no one knows why. We could let him know that no matter what's going on in his life, life itself is a gift. They proceed to talk about the benefits of, you know, looking on the bright side of things, which of course is good, but they use an example that just doesn't make sense. Remember Clyde the porpoise? Who could forget? Lost his dorsal fin in that tsunami last year. And discovered that he could swim faster in the currents as a result. I don't think that's how that works. It's not. Removing a porpoise's dorsal fin is like chopping the tail off an airplane. It's there for hydrodynamics, so losing it would definitely be a net negative. I guess you could say that analogy didn't hold water. Because they're, like, they're in the ocean. Okay. Muggles and Joy swim off to find Scary Henry and get to the bottom of why he's so unhappy. <laughs> Dude, you're not British. This is, like, it's just so funny. I don't know why she's putting on an accent, by the way. Like, she's David Attenborough narrating a marine life documentary. There he is! Hey, Scary Henry! <laughs> and also, they call him Scary Henry to his face. <laughs> like, that's... When you, when you give someone a nickname like that, it's usually just behind their back. <laughs> like, like, hey, this is my friend, uh, Ugly Joe. What the hell, man? Right, what's the deal, Henry? I don't even have a reef to call home. Oh, Henry. In the sea, we're all family. And if you need a reef to go home, come back to ours. I'm good. So yeah, that conversation with Henry doesn't go anywhere because he's too crabby but I'm to listen to them. So then they go and visit Mrs. Wudley. Mrs. Wudley. For advice, and she basically just starts giving them a sermon. He's feeling really down. It sounds like this friend could use a lesson in gratitude. It comes out of the habit of giving thanks. I see your point. I never get crabby when I remember to regularly thank Jesus for everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not laughing at Christianity. I want to make that very clear. I'm just laughing at like how on the nose this type of dialogue is. It's always like this. I never get crabby when I remember to regularly thank Jesus for everything. Oh, I just love regularly thanking Jesus for everything. It's never a bad idea to refer to the good book, my sweet baby fish. Hold on, she's just, but she's about to just quote the Bible. Like Psalm chapter nine, verse one tells us, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Wait, how do they have the Bible? How, how do they have a, what is it, the fish Bible? How do they have books? What do you think these fish think about, like, the story of Jonah? No relation. That was the Bible story about the guy who got eaten by a whale. To the fish, would that story be, like, cannibalism? Or no, like, I guess there's a whole other separate question of, like, is Jesus, to them, a fish? You believe God is a fish. But anyway, this, like, muggles enjoy going around and talking to various sea creatures about Jesus is the entire movie. Just talking. And you'll see quickly that it gets very repetitive. But hey, back to Scary Henry. Muggles and Joy go back and talk to him and tell him about Jesus, and now he's happy. You fish sure know how to make a guy feel better. All in a day's work in the ocean. With a heart full of gratitude and love for Jesus. Little- so <laughs> So that was a very on-the-nose segue, but I didn't think much of it until I realized they used that exact line like five more times in the movie. With a heart full of gratitude and love for Jesus. With hearts full of gratitude and love for God. Full of gratitude and love for God. Full of gratitude and love for God. You already said God. that. You, are Little you know, I'm beginning to think that writers don't deserve to be paid a living wage. It's a beautiful day in the ocean. No, yeah, we remember. Um, just in case you forgot where this movie takes place. Okay, we don't want anyone to be lost. 
It's the ocean. We're glad to be back, Professor Short. Yeah, it's not easy swimming around with all these new predators in the sea. You know that he's a... He's a... Literally a predator. So. So today their predator, I mean, Professor, has another job for them to do, which is to go and rescue their friend Marlo. Marlo the swordfish? Marlo wasn't paying attention and got himself stuck in seaweed. If he can't swim and keep water rushing through his gills, he can't breathe. Wait, so he's sending them on a mission to save this swordfish's life because he can't breathe. Call the police. Call the f fish police. Or go yourself, you're a shark. What are they gonna do? Pep talk him out of the seaweed? Look, I know you're suffocating right now, but if you just pray to Jesus, he will get you out of there. What are you fucking talking about? Call 911. See, this is your problem. You're too focused on breathing that you're not thinking about thanking Jesus regularly. How long has Marlo been stuck, Professor? Several minutes at least. There's no time to spare, I know that. <laughs> hey guys, your friend is suffocating right now. Actually, he's not, because we find out that he just escaped the seaweed on his own. He used his nose to slice right through those pesky weeds. And that happens a lot too, where we just hear about some plot point happening off screen so they don't have to animate it. We heard you needed us. And we are your friends. Wow. I've never had friends who risked their lives for me before. They didn't, though. What did they do that was risky? Tomorrow we can all swim out here and eat till our hearts are content. And our stomachs are full. <laughs> that sounds great, you guys. You know, you remind me of David and Jonathan from the Bible. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start speed running through the rest of this movie because I... I think you get it. It's not like the story matters. It's more like an anthology, actually. Muggles and Joy return to see Professor Shark and tell him all they've learned about friendship. Is, pro is Professor Shark like a quest NPC? Does he move from that one place? Muggles, Joy, welcome back. What have you two been up to? The next day, Joy and Muggles go and tell Professor Shark about how they were giving algae to people. Like the Bible teaches us, real strength is found in serving, not being served. So by giving the algae away, instead of just taking algae, we got closer to Jesus? <sighs> oh. So by giving algae away instead of just taking algae, we got closer to Jesus? They pull up to their pufferfish friend's crib and she starts quoting the Bible at them. When you give a dinner or a supper, do not invite your friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors, for they will invite you in return and you be repaid. Okay, again, I guess this is more of a comment on the actual Bible verse, but don't invite your friends and neighbors to dinner, when you're having a birthday party or you're getting married, no family. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I haven't been recording audio for the past like 20 minutes. Then they go say hi to their friend Patty, who's a whale. Much to Patty's surprise, Muggles and Joy prepared a gift, a yummy seabed littered with plump crustaceans, a big whale's favorite treat. What do you think? <laughs> Look at them all. Crustaceans are my favorite. Oh yeah, thanks for having her say that right after the narrator said it. Just, again, we don't want anyone to be confused here. Whales like crustaceans. Did you find Patty the whale? We sure did, Professor. And we gave her a gift of crustaceans. Her favorite. Yes, we f No, she likes crustaceans. And then we have probably the most out of pocket scene I have seen in any of these movies, and it's not for the reasons you might think. I'd like it very much if you got together with your reef mate, Mr. Flips, and went to see Mr. Sushi. 
Perhaps he can shed some light on the power of moral purity. Mr. Sushi? Seems like a kind of a cruel name for a fish to have. See, I thought that Mr. Sushi would be some fish that is associated with sushi. You know, maybe a, a, an ahi tuna, or a, or a salmon, or a squid. It's, um, it's so much worse. Muggles and Joy swim off to see their friend, the grumpy Mr. Sushi. Hey, Mr. Sushi. What are you two, Reed or a fish, doing so far from your reef? Not only is he an actual sushi roll with arms, what? But he, the voice and the, oh God. This movie came out in 2020. Yeah. Oh my, I always thought you two were good or little fish. Only a few weeks old. Okay, I do believe that is enough of that. The next day, we've yet again skipped over a huge event that happened off screen. And little fish muggles and joy are returning to their brand new coral reef after strong currents destroyed their old one. What? 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 We're gonna gloss over the fact that their home got destroyed by currents. And Mr. Shark tells them to go check in on their friend Boo Cakes? Boo Cakes? Now based on that name and this character design, I want you to guess what Boo Cakes sounds like. Time's up. Uh, okay, if you think it'll help. Anyways, you can see this is the point where I kind of just checked out because nothing was happening. The dialogue continued to sound like it was being written by a robot. Oh, Rosie, I'm sure there's a super reason Fizzy no-showed on your play date. Why is the dialogue so weird? I'm sure there's a super reason she no-showed on your play date. And that was Finding Jesus. Hold on, who voiced Mr. Sushi? I really want to see what that guy's name is. K.J. Schrock. Oh. Good. Good. The curse of God is on the house of the wicked, but to the modest, he ever shows a favor. <sighs> Final thoughts. I... am converting to Hinduism. Anyway, if you thought that movie was a weird trip, then you better buckle up for this next one, because it's... <laughs> is way worse. Okay, after a short break to recover, we're back. Now this next movie is special because it is a ripoff of Rio, which you might already know is a movie that I like quite a bit, and it is called Lovebirds. The birds are the birds are blue. Like what else it, it, it that's anyway, this better be good. Or I swear to God. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still waiting for Rio 3. I don't, I've, I can't, I couldn't even hazard a guess as to when that's coming out at this point. So this'll just have to do. Oh, I don't want to click on this one even more. Beep, 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 beep. My Valentine. Valentine's Day is almost here, you guys. Do you two have anything fun planned to celebrate? As a matter of fact, we do, Rhonda. Yeah, we've been working on a little surprise to spring on the town at the big concert. <laughs> I have to look at this for an hour. I mean, I don't have to. Nobody's making me do this, but oh my god. <laughs> God. Well, if I keep snacking from those new bird feeders up in the North Woods, pretty soon I'll be as big as an ape. I think this guy's trying to do a British accent too. Um, and uh, he's also not 
It's also not working. Okay, so here's what's happening. Marshall, Mimi, and Rhonda are all talking about how excited they are about the upcoming Valentine's Day concert. And once again, most of the scenes are just talking. Um, thank you for coming all the way out here from the city, Mr. Ace. Oh my god, ew. I hate it. So this is Tiny, and that is my sleep paralysis demon. His name is Ace though, and he's a talent scout for a big music producer named Mr. Whatnot. What, so the characters so far have been an ape, two birds, a hippo, and a fucking mutant, gi a giant insect? Where are they supposed to be? So I mentioned how most of these scenes are just talking, but the one thing that this movie has that Finding Jesus did not is musical numbers. And I bet you can't wait to hear what those sound like. Uh, right, so I, I wrote a song that I was thinking I might like to sing at the Valentine's concert. Oh yeah, wrote a song, huh? Oh my god, I, I are they gonna like play a song? Go ahead and sing it for me. I've never seen two eyes as big and blue and bright as yours. Whether on hind legs or walking on all fours, it's only you. You might be thinking that this is supposed to be bad, like it's like it's the point that they that she sucks. Um, it, it isn't, cause Ace likes it enough to offer her an audition. You going back to the pond, or are you ready to take the next step? The next step? What is it? An audition with Mr. Whatnot. I know for a fact that this movie was created by people who just don't have the first idea about music. I know that because right before Tiny sings her song, she asks, do you want it in G major or A flat? Do you want to hear it in G major or A flat? Which doesn't make any sense. Why would she prepare the song in two different keys? And like, I get it, not everyone can be a talented musician, but you know, it, it helps. Hey y'all, what's up? Oh, nothing much, Dave. This is Dave. Um, Dave is entirely irrelevant. I never knew you were bashful, Dave. Oh yeah, I, I might come off like a roughneck. No, no you don't. But I'm just a shy old country groundhog at heart. Ace invited me to downtown to a singing audition for Mr. Whatnot. Happy for you. What are you gonna wear? Wear? I'm not wearing anything. Wait, what kind of audition did you say this was again? Oh. <laughs> nice. I'm not wearing anything because I'm not going, Rhonda. Not going? What? So now Tiny's getting cold feet about the whole audition thing because the love song she wrote for this guy she has a crush on, ooh, drama. You're in love with Emmett? Yes, yes I am. She realizes that she can never write the perfect lyrics and that she should just give up. I've come to realize that there is no perfection. What? Perfect is a construct that only exits in our minds. Exits in our minds. And once I really thought about it, the idea that I would go into show business just to express my feelings for one newt seemed silly. The guy she has a crush on is a newt. Just go with it. But think of this. What if, instead of professing your love to the one object of your affection, Emmett, you profess those same feelings to them through song? That's what she was, <laughs> that's what she was doing. I've been trying to write the perfect love song for this guy I like, but I just can't think of exactly what to sing about. Well, that's too bad, but there's other ways for you to tell someone you like them. Like, uh, for example, writing a song. That's it. But Mimi's brilliant idea convinces her. If anyone deserves a lucky break, it's Tiny. I agree. I can't wait to see how she does. Now, if you couldn't tell from that guy's epic, swaggy, intimidating introduction, this is the main villain of the movie, Lil Wing's Fresh Quills. And he is a rapper. Let's hear it. Squawk, squawk, little birdies, it's feeding time. Feast your eyes and your ears on my rhythm and my rhyme. Uh. Mic drop. One, two, one, two. 
One, two, one, two! Oh, I hate it. It's, it's about a boy. I have a crush on someone. A crush? Shorty, all you had to do was say so. Oh, <laughs> check it out. I got a little something, something for you. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, stop, stop. No Riz, no Riz, no Riz. So he sucks, but he doesn't start doing villainy stuff until later. So for now, let's just go see how Tiny's audition is coming along. What's the name of your song, hippo? It's Love Tickles My Ears. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Some creatures have no external ears. How will they relate? We'll call your song Six Feet Under. Six feet under? But that doesn't sound like a love song, and you haven't even heard it yet. Doesn't matter. I can sell a song called Six Feet Under. It's like this was written by people who know a lot about the industry and also nothing at all. I was about to say how it was an actual, like, genuine critique of how corporate supervision can ruin the spirit of art. But then he just started saying nonsense. Yeah, so I'm gonna change your song name to something that doesn't make any sense, and then it's gonna be a hit, even though I haven't heard it yet. And it's gonna be a hit because I'm gonna make a phone call. I'm sad when you leave, my dear Emmett. Stay. Stop. Stop right there. Huh? Was it that bad? Yes. What is this? Emmett stuff. He, he's who this song is about. Obviously, but listeners don't know that or don't care. I guess this guy hasn't heard like Roxanne, Billie Jean. Those are the only songs with names I could think of. So it seems like Mr. Whatnot hated her performance, as he should. Your image is boring. Your name's lame. Your song's terrible. Oh, okay, so they think it's bad too. I, I thought I thought they were just gonna pretend like that was super good and you have so much potential. Uh, but then he inexplicably still hires her. But I can work with it. You're hired. Dude, what? You, so that interview was just like, okay, so you have absolutely no talent. You're frankly ugly. Your name sucks. You're fat. Oh. Um, and the kind of music you want to make is just not what we're looking for. Okay. But if we change everything about you, then you'll be perfect. You're hired. I'm confused, but go off and get the bag queen, I suppose. Hi, y'all! Hey, hey Emmett. Emmett! What's new and exciting? <laughs> And this is Emmett, the newt that Tiny had a crush on. Hold on, re oh, hold on, go back. I need to look at this guy's posture. <laughs> oh man, that is not, that is, yeesh. Hey, what's up, you guys? What's, what's up, what are you guys doing today? Mr. Whatnot signed her to an exclusive contract today. Get out of here, congrats, Tiny. I didn't even know you could sing. She can't. What up, Whatnot? What's all this bunk I'm hearing about new star in the stable? This new talent I signed, she's got skills. Did you say she? Oh, oh, a girl? Okay, so herein lies the conflict. Lil Wings doesn't want to be upstaged by Tiny as if her music would occupy anywhere near the same space as his. So his plan is to take over the Valentine's Day show. I got my own ideas on how Lil Wings evolves, and it starts with Valentine's Day. Oh, tell me more, Lil Wings. You want to drop a new track? <laughs> I've never heard that been said in a more white. So you would like to drop a track, good sir? Perhaps a mixtape or two? Perhaps I could drop some uh, hot fire in the studio? <laughs> I suggest canceling Valentine's Day and replacing it with a new jam. Lil Wings Day and the inaugural Lil Wings Fresh Concert, featuring your boy. <laughs> anyway, the next morning, everybody comes to the tryouts for the Valentine's Day show. Tiny, would you like to go first? Oh, I I don't think so. I'm still memorizing the new song Mr. Whatnot gave me to sing. Oh good, you haven't memorized the song yet. Good. Well, then you should do great. So because Tiny doesn't even know her song yet, Mimi and Marshall go first. Let's see what they've been working on. Hit it! 
Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, the, the dance moves did not match the music, but he was breaking it down. It's going on the playlist. So that had nothing to do with the plot, but hey, Tiny's coming up. Maybe she'll be even better. This is a little something I call six feet under. Six feet under? One, two, three, four. I spent a lot of nights dreaming about your face. Scrabble fever brain was all over the place. Oh, but I came to my senses. This is the best movie I've ever seen. I used to love your face. I used to love your voice. But you're just a disgrace. Um, uh, are you hearing what I'm hearing? The thing is, this, it, clearly, like, they're trying to say here, we're supposed to think that this is bad. Like, like when the producer stepped in and changed the song, he, he just made it worse. But that plot point doesn't really work, because, like, it was still terrible when she sung it the first time. So many hours alone in the day. This is really no different. Still terrible. Six feet under. I'm uncomfortable. And I said what I was thinking. But don't worry, guys, because then Lil Wings comes along and blows everyone off the stage with his frickin' epic freestyle flow. Everybody make some noise for your favorite rapper, Lil Wings Fresh Quills! Just one problem, though, because if you'll recall, this guy flows like a lake. BAM! Coming out the treetops like a feathered kamikaze jump! Bullseye on your windshield when I take a big ol' beep! What? You line up in a queue with your mama daddy too. But they ain't got a clue? Fresh Quills here to tell you. I hit been up and dead to sing and punks can't do anything but sit and wait for that phone to ring. The wings got all the bling bling! It's like impressive how the performances dropped off in quality as the show went on. This really was the perfect mess. You couldn't make something this bad if you tried. But anyway, once that's over, the announcer breaks the news to everyone about the Valentine's Day show. This year's Fernville Valentine's Day concert has unfortunately been canceled. And our guys are not happy about it. This isn't good. Not at all. Why would they hold tryouts if they were just gonna cancel the show? You know, that's a good point. Why the f didn't they just cancel the tryouts? Like, what? <laughs> Luckily, Marshall and Mimi come up with a genius plan to stop Lil Wings and save their concert, which is to... Checks notes. Find Cupid. Cupid is the best, if not the only, shot we have of calling off that Lil Wings concert. So I guess we'll see how that fixes their problem. Fast forwarding through a bunch of bullshit. Um, eventually they do find him. And I gotta say, this version of Cupid is quite a confusing character. Did somebody say love? Uh, I guess that's my cue. Wait, what? I mean, he actually doesn't look that creepy, but I guess it's just weird that he's just a baby. I don't know, I was getting used to everyone being a creepy looking animal that somehow like an actual just child threw me off guard. First of all, where do you live? This desert island? What are you doing here? Second, he seems to be like annoyed, just in general. Where do you want it? Uh, where do I want what? My arrow! Your friend here just needs to get hit by my arrow, then you birds can go make a bunch of little birds. Ew. Oh my god. It's like he's pissed off that he has to do his job, uh, but he also really wants them to f And is it just me, or does it sound like he's from New York? Just when I thought it was safe to grab a catnap, along come you two! Hey, I'm making people fall in love here! So they ask Cupid for help with their situation, and he does... something. Stand back, lovebirds. I'll fix this. <laughs> But whatever it is he does, it ruins Lil Wings' performance. Yada, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Pay your money for my tickets. I go, ha, ha, ha. Okay, so once again, we're supposed to believe that now his rap is bad. 
This is he's this this is the same as last time. I'ma go and get my toolbox, cause y'all just tools. Chewing on my lyrics like some hungry ghouls. He's never been good. That should take care of little wings. You birds can probably head back home now. Really? How'd you do it, Cupid? Was it that arrow? Uh, you'd be surprised what my arrows can do. What? They're just not gonna explain, like, what Cupid did. Does he, he has, I guess he has two types of arrows. The shoot you and you fall in love arrows, and the make you bad at rapping arrows. So, you know, pick your poison. It'd be really funny if he mixed those two up, though. <laughs> oh, I hate Eminem. I'm gonna ruin his career forever. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, his mom is- Ow! I got him. Somebody just shot me in the neck. Wait, what? Which I definitely did not expect. Wait, hang on a sec. God damn it. Is that you, Cupid? Hi, Marshall. Oh man, I don't want to sound too stupid. Uh... But the truth is, I think we should be more than just friends. <laughs> really? Well, that depends. Do you like the type of guy to spit fire like a flamethrower? Yeah. Then come on over. What the heck? Mm, mm, mm. I stopped recording for a while to write that, um sketch and I already forget what was going on in the movie. So Mimi has one last favor to ask Cupid before he goes back to the bodega for a bacon, egg, and cheese. Cupid, just one more thing before we go. Our friend Tiny has a crush and she doesn't know how to tell him. Tell me his name, I'll take care of it. That terrible tryout really squashed my confidence. Maybe, just maybe, all she has to do is wait. Huh? Wait? Wait for what? Ow! Oh, and that's the end. Fantastic. Boy, that was a f mess. And, and wait, it ended with, with, um, God, what was his name? Emmett. It ended with Emmett just, the Cupid just shot Emmett. Like, they didn't write it so that, I don't know, Tiny, she, she built up the confidence to, like, talk to him. No, they just paid a hitman, the love hitman, to be like, that that one. What a cool lesson. If you don't know how to ask your crush out, tell Cupid to do it. So that was Lovebirds. You may have realized that the two bird characters did not fall in love. The title is a complete lie. And also, the cover is a lie. Because like, who are these birds? And what did they do with Mimi and Marshall? Do you think I am an idiot? There are a lot of mysteries in the world, like was 9-11 an inside job? Who built the pyramids? Is milk real? But I think the biggest unsolved mystery by man is why Lovebirds uses two different models that are not in the movie on the poster. I just can't imagine making something like this earnestly. <laughs> like I genuinely will not believe that this was made by someone who had a passion for storytelling and just really wanted to to make their mark in the filmmaking industry now. But now that I'm done watching these movies, let's go ahead and rank them. Let's head over to the... <laughs> well, actually, same chair again. I'm just gonna turn the camera to a different angle, but just go. Okay, I've given myself some time to reflect. Now I will be putting these films on the list. Starting with Finding Jesus. This movie was... This movie? The voice acting sucked, the uh, dialogue sucked, I uh, had no story, it was boring. I couldn't focus on the narration because of how bad the lady's British accent was. I guess the one thing it had going for it was that the animation wasn't that bad. And it did have a lot of um, ironically funny moments. Oh wait, I almost forgot about... <laughs> Mr. Sushi. Yes, yeah, so I will have to deduct a few points for the racism. You know, I think it might go at the very bottom because like it's 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 not even bad enough for it to kind of come around and be good. Life's a Jungle was that bad. The animation was horrendous and the voice acting was just a train wreck. Yeah, and I heard that girls smell good too. 
okay. What are they talking about? But I think I would still rather watch this than Finding Jesus again. And I'm not even gonna get into the Christian element of it and how like, it was just too on the nose and how it was just super repetitive because the entire structure was just them talking. <laughs> Didn't I just say I wouldn't get into it and then immediately gets into it? Whatever, it's the worst one I've, I've, I've watched so far in this series. And Lovebirds. Hold on, there's a lot of movies called that. Which one is it? Is it this one? It is. Okay, so initially it was just like super boring, but like the <laughs> when they started trying to do s like musical numbers, that was just like so s bad that it's funny. And the fact that they just threw Cupid in at the end was and like didn't really do that much with him at all. I don't know, it's just <laughs> Probably I'm gonna put it above Life's a Jungle. Is it better than Dogtown? Honestly, yeah, um, what was that one annoying dog's name? Um, God, I don't remember. <sighs> Come on, you can remember what were their names, what were their names? God, the one dog that just like screamed all the time. I hated him, I hated him, I hated him. I think the cat may just be out of the bag. Where, 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 let me out of <sighs> And Lovebirds gets, a, gets to be above it for not having that. Uh, no, you know what? Kung Fu Bunny was, um, more entertaining because it had, like, it had, like, kung fu action scenes. I mean, they weren't good, but it was something. Okay, this list is, um, getting longer. I'm really looking forward to seeing how many more of these I can take. But yeah, that was the ranking. Now let's kick it back over to present Jonah. Another great episode for the books. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe and do everything else that makes YouTube show this to more people. And to send us off this time, I think I want to do something a little different. Uh, I've actually prepared a little song and dance number for you guys, so if you don't mind, I'll just, I'll just play us out with that. <sighs> okay, hit it. Oh yeah. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder. Oh shit! Up above the world so high Like a 